Mount Pleasant Baptist Church ministry announcement. Mount Pleasant Baptist Church, this is your week at a glance. And as always, remember, we grow here. MPBC, as you've heard, this week is our Mount Pleasant Baptist Church We Grow Here Church Conference. Each of you are invited and encouraged to attend starting on Tuesday, April 9th through April 11th. Classes will be each night starting at 6.30 p.m. through 7.20 p.m. And the lecture will start at 7.30 and run through 8 p.m. Nightly classes will be Spiritual Growth in Marriage, hosted by Dr. Carl Johnson. Growing Spiritually in a Chaotic World, taught by Rev. Jason Clark. And Becoming a Better Me, brought to us by Rev. Justin Rhodes. All classes will be hybrid, meaning in person and on Zoom. And the Zoom information can be found on the RAM and church websites. Each lecture will also be streamed live on Facebook and YouTube Live starting at 7.30 p.m. Hope to see you there. Saints, we've been given the opportunity to demonstrate the love of God and to minister to His children on Saturday, April 13th. At 8 a.m., the Loudoun County Care Group and the Feed the Hungry Ministries will come together to serve breakfast to the residents of the Loudoun Emergency Homeless Shelter in Leesburg, Virginia. We will prepare, cook, serve, and pray. We'll arrive between 6.30 and 6.45 a.m. and get started soon thereafter. If you feel led, please join us in reaching his people and spreading the word and love of God. The points of contacts are Deacon Ross and Deaconess Therese Sims, Deaconess Beverly Walker, and Reverend Lisa Howard. Please reach out to them on the round or call the church at 703-793-1196. We look forward to seeing you there. The MPBC International Fellowship is having an April Fellowship, Spring Renewal. Come join us for food, fun, and games. This event is for the whole family. 3 p.m. on April 21st, 2024 in the MPBC Fellowship Hall. Life is so beautiful as it very much should be. Life is filled with wonderful friendships. Life is filled with some romance. Life is filled with a lifetime of family memories. And life is all about wonderful experiences. But unfortunately, life is not always good. Sometimes life is indeed filled with sadness. Life is filled with shocking disappointments. And for every single one of us, life is filled with death. Let's get your family covered and protected together. The National Organization of Black Law Enforcement Executives, known as NOBLE, Northern Virginia Chapter presents the 2024 Scholarship Program. The chapter has been sponsoring this program in conjunction with the annual golf tournament fundraiser for more than 20 years, and many MPBC graduates have been blessed through the years. Scholarship applicants must be graduating high school seniors who have been accepted into an accredited U.S. college or university or a full-time student enrolled in an accredited U.S. college or university. Please see additional guidelines in the scholarship application. Completed scholarship packets must be submitted, postmark, by April 30th, 2024. All MPBC eligible students are encouraged to apply and please use Brother Emmett DeShield's name as your sponsor. The application and more information on the scholarship is posted within the RAM. Calling all Mount Pleasant Baptist Church graduating high school seniors. It's time to apply for the 2024 MPBC scholarship. The scholarship application is available on the RAM or on the church website. All applications must be submitted electronically to ltodd at mtpleasantbaptist.org. Please include within the subject, attention, education. The deadline is May 5th and there are no exceptions. 
If you have any questions, please contact Deaconess Mary Todd at 703-830-0948 or at mejtodd at verizon.net. Thank you. Mount Pleasant, God has blessed us on so many different levels, and we need to let others know about it, but we cannot do it without you. Domestic missions need mission leads to guide those who want to volunteer. Domestic Missions is looking to fill the lead positions for the evangelism and intercessory prayer ministries. Evangelism and prayer are core and vital to the church, and we need to ensure that we do our part. If you're interested, please pray about it and reach out to Reverend Lisa Howard on the RAM or call the church and leave a message. Thank you. For more information, please visit mtpleasantbaptist.org. You're now in the know. This concludes Mount Pleasant Baptist Church weekly announcements. Amen. Good evening, everyone. Amen, amen, amen. We welcome you to our uh, We Grow Here Church Conference, our conference on spiritual growth. We are grateful for everyone who has come out tonight who is in person, and to all those who are watching us via YouTube or Facebook, we are so grateful for you. Uh, let me thank all of our teachers who have shared on tonight. Uh, I was able to walk around each class. We want to thank them for that. Let me apologize for our technical issues. You know, in this new hybrid church, it's, you know, it's, it's hard. Amen. You should just put somebody in the class and let them teach. Now you got to make sure the camera is set up and a computer is set up. And, and, and Lord have mercy. Uh, <laughs> Sister Shelley has said, I'm going to get you some skates for tomorrow night. Amen. As much going back and forth as I did. Uh, but listen, those links that we have out now, uh, we're going to reproduce them and send out some more links tomorrow. So to those who are hybrid, and, and, and we would love for you to come in person. We would love for you to come and be in person. Uh, but for those who are going to take the classes hybrid, please make sure you check uh, the Realm and our church website tomorrow for updated links uh, Zoom links so that we can make sure tomorrow we'll be able to get started on time uh, with those new new links. Uh, but we do thank each of you for coming out and sharing uh, on tonight. Uh, one more thing we wanted to know that, listen, you're supposed to go to the same class all three nights. Everybody get that? Everybody get that? Y'all didn't get that, did you? Y'all thought y'all was going to different classes? Amen. No, you're supposed to go to the same class each night. Uh, now you're saying, oh. <laughs> now listen, y'all can do what you want to do, amen. But the teachers were going to teach three completely nights, you know, of, and you were supposed to go to one class, not go to, because they couldn't get it all in one night. So, but listen, y'all let the Lord use you. Amen. As y'all say all the time, let the Lord lead you and guide you and do what you want to do. But the, the, the idea was that you would go to one class uh, all week long. Amen. In that one class, you would get uh, everything from that one class. Amen. <laughs> uh, uh, Deaconess Todd is the one who told me, Pastor, I think you need to tell them that. <laughs> Amen. So, so if you didn't know that, you're supposed to go to the same class each night. Amen. 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 I'm grateful tonight uh, for our lecture for tonight. As you know, uh, each night we'll be in class uh, for 45 minutes to 50 minutes, and then we'll come and have a lecture. And so one of our teachers will lecture each night. And so for our first night, uh, our lecture is one of my best friends, amen, in all this world. Uh, we met over 30 years ago. Uh, I think it was in 1990 uh, at Morehouse College. I was the sports editor of the Maroon Tiger, and he was the new hot and up-and-coming tennis player on the Morehouse College tennis team. And so I went to interview him for the Maroon Tiger newspaper, and who would have thought that 30 years later we would uh, still be friends? At that time, we weren't uh, really in ministry yet, but soon after that, we both kind of got in ministry, and, 
and ended up graduating together, and then we went to Howard together, and, and we've been a part of each other's lives, and this is how God will work. Now, both of our children, amen. My son is at Morehouse, and his daughter is over at Spelman, uh, and so I'm grateful for his many, many, many years of friendship. Uh, he is the pastor of the Omega Baptist Church. They have a location in Randallstown, Maryland, and a location in Baltimore City. Uh, but he is the Reverend Jason in Clark, and I want him to come and share with us tonight uh, on the importance of the Word of God. Let's give him a hand clap of praise as he comes. My friend. Thank you, sir. Hello to each and every one of you. It is good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. We just honor him and bless him because he is so good and so wonderful and he does all things well. Um, my wife said don't call her to do anything. She's here purely for support. Um, but I always, and, and I wish I could sing a master, come stand next to me. here. I just, I like summoning the presence of God uh, in song and because my voice is only made for the shower. I'm gonna ask her just to stand next to me. Uh, and y'all help us with this. Help us. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Christ the Lord. All right, so that'll just help us summon the spirit, just stay in the moment. The importance of studying the word of God. And so for those of you who don't know, um, one of the first things I wanted to do when I gave my life to Christ was read the whole Bible. Read the whole Bible. Anybody here ever read the whole Bible in its entirety? Anybody fall asleep when you got to Leviticus? I can tell if you read it for sure if you fell asleep in Leviticus. Because after you get through all those begots, it's just kind of like, I need to go to bed. So in reading the whole Bible and in reading the whole Bible again and just going through it, memorization and studying the word of God, there are some scriptures that always pop out. And one of those I want to share with you is from Psalm 119. Psalm 119 is an acrostic. So all of the alphabets of the Hebrew Bible are in Psalm 119 from Olive, Beth, Gimel, Dalet. Those are the Hebrew words. And there's eight verses for every alphabetical letter. It's 176 verses because there's eight alphabet or 22 alphabets and then eight verses per. And it gives you eight different words for the word of God from mitzvot, so commandment, law, statute, precepts, all these different words. And I don't want to bore you with that, but I do want to kind of walk you through the importance of scripture. So our opening scripture, and I don't know if, if did they get it to put it on? Okay. Our opening scripture, Psalm 119, verse 105. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And, and I start with that because that's really what the word of God is, a light. It's a light for you. It's a light in you. It's a light around you. And the more you focus in on this word, the better your steps are going to be. Come on, talk to me here. The, your steps are going to be with God. So here's what I did. Turn to the next slide for me, if you will. Have you ever tried to navigate the house in the dark? Now, you know what your house looks like, right? Come on, say amen. Come on, look around. Uh, you know what everything is in your house. You know where your bed is. You know where the chair next to the bed is, where the lamps are. You know where everything is. But have, you know where everything is in the light, but at night, even what you know can cause you to stump your toe. My God in here. I mean, even what you know. When, 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 that, light, when that light is off, and, and I don't know about y'all, but I'm getting a little older now. I got in my big toe, I got arthritis. Uh-huh. Where are my arthritis people at? Wait, wait, wait me look. It, it hurt, don't it hurt? And so when you have bone on bone and that bone hit a chair, oh my God. You be calling on the Holy Ghost, you be calling on Jesus or somebody, ice pack, something to help you. And so the light of the word of God is what keeps things illuminated so you can see. And it's important that you remember that. Let me go back to the first scripture. All right, it's a word, it's a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Because you're not really worried about what's above, you're worried about what's below. What can cause you to stumble in situations? I love God in here. Hallelujah. So you want to keep. So let's move to the third slide. Imagine having a reliable source 
of guidance and wisdom that can light up your path and lead you in the right direction. That's the source is the word of God. It leads you in the right direction. As I was sharing with my class, the things that God has done in my life have been because, hallelujah, not because I've been so good. Anybody here, a sinner like me, save, oh, come on, say, wait, let, let me see you. Uh, where, I'm, I'm gonna have to do this. Where are my sinners at? I just need to check. Hey, okay, make sure, okay, make sure y'all here. Uh, because the reason why I gotta make sure I'm not, not, not around the self-righteous, I need the sinners in here. Sinners help, let me say, the source of guidance and wisdom that can light up your path and lead you in the right direction, especially when you go in the wrong direction. So not only does it lead you in the right direction, when you don't see the light, you know you're not going in the right direction because God is going to lead you. The Bible says what? He leads me in the path of, for what? His namesake. The source is the word of God. And I wish that people, uh, I, I saw a pastor one day, Pastor Donaldson, say, I wish everybody carried a Bible, not just their phone. Because when you're carrying your phone, he said, you don't know if it's a Bible on it or not. But when you have a leather bound or a pleather bound or one of them strong Bibles that you can throw at somebody, like when you have one of those, people know you're reading the word of God. And every now and then, even though this iPad is up here, I grab my leather Bible that my father bought me way back in 1991. I flip through the passages that have candle uh, uh, wax spilled on it from when I was burning candles and praying. They have highlighted stuff in there, little margin errors in their passage. You know what I'm talking about, where you done wrote little scriptures and what you were going through in there. And it reminds you that this word has been your sword in battle. I'm going to help y'all out here. Remember when David, y'all going to make me really preach. When, remember when David... Got ready to go fight Goliath. Y'all remember the story of him talking to Saul? And Saul said, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put on you my coat of armor. I'm going to put on you what I use. And David said, that's cool, Saul, but, but I, I'm used to just a slingshot. I'm used to my stuff. See, sometimes you have to know the word of God, where to find stuff. And that's what's important about having the word of God as the light of your life. You know what that sword can do. You know what that sword has brought you through. I need a hallelujah right there. You know what that sword has saw you through. You know the battles and the demons that you slain with the word of God. So the word of God is your source. Let's move to the next slide. It says the word of God is not just my source, it's my guide. It guides me. It leads me. It shares with me all the things I need to know wherever I go. It'll tell you how to be a good husband. It'll tell you how to be a good wife. It'll tell you how to parent your children. Yeah, because there are times when we don't want to spare the rod, but what does the Bible also say about being a parent? Don't provoke, provoke your children to wrath, right? So sometimes you want to take your wrath out on them. Somebody say amen. And, and you realize, no, nah, it's not the belt. I shared this in class. It's not the belt or the bullet this time. It's the Bible. I need the word of God to use wisdom on how to handle them delicately. The word of God is my guide. So here's our scripture, Psalm 119, verse 9. How can a young person stay on the path of purity? By living according to God's word. You can turn the slide for me. How can a young person stay on the path of purity? By living according to your word. One more for me, one more. All right? And what does that simply mean? It means that as I'm living my life and being guided by God, it's going, I'm going to look at his word and it's going to give me direction. Pastor, I remember we used to have hair. I'm talking about on top of our head. We had hair, and then the hair left, and then we got dark beards, because we at least tell people we could grow hair. And then the gray, the gray started kicking in. Hallelujah to God. And what does the Bible say about gray hair? Anybody? The Bible says when you find gray hair in the way of wisdom, it's a crown of righteousness. So don't, don't color that gray. Celebrate it. Because when you're walking with God, it tells people that you've been walking with them and you've been, been sharing with them. And God has now crowned you, maybe not up here, but right here, with a crown of glory. How can a young person stay on the path here? By living according to the word of God. I love his scripture. I'm just going to keep flipping through scriptures. The word of God is like a map or ways that points us in the right direction. Now, I'm going to get you guys right here. You're going to tell your age. Ready? Who remembers the Thomas guy? Uh-oh, I don't know Thomas guy. No Thomas guys? Was that a California thing? It was a California, okay, okay, so I got a sister from California. Okay, I was gonna say, somebody in here, okay, so you're from California? What part? Okay, the best part, okay. <laughs> if you had said San Francisco, that ain't nothing but Oregon. Um, 
So in California, and, and I thought it was across the nation, so that's just my California arrogance, forgive me. In California, when we got ready to go somewhere, uh, uh, wife, my dad would take out this blue book that had all these pages in it. And he would flip to a page and it would show the map of that area. And then you'd have to flip to another page if you were going further. And you just kept flipping pages to see how you were going to map out your journey. We didn't have fancy things like maps and ways like our kids today. It was something that you went to every time you got ready to go somewhere that was unfamiliar. Because it would tell you how to get. Did they have one for Virginia? Triple A had a book here? I was like, we didn't have fancy. We had Thomas Guy. Uh, and, and the Thomas would tell you how to get there. So if you were going from, let's say, L.A. to like Arcadia or L.A. to Whittier, and we, you know, black folks back then didn't really live in Whittier, didn't live, live in Arcadia. So, so we'd have to get the Thomas Guide out because you didn't want to go in the wrong areas because there's it, some stuff in California too. Y'all say amen to that. I, I tell people that all the time. I said, California got some, some, some pockets in there. So my dad would pull out this book and he'd flip through it all morning long trying to get us to the tennis tournament. And once he wrote out his map, he'd take the book and he'd put it in the car. So just in case we got laws, He'd pull the book out, we'd pull over, and he'd start looking through that book. And I'm so glad for ways and maps, because I couldn't imagine pulling over now and having to look through some book to try to find where I was going. It, think about that. I want to say it again. When we got lost, he'd pull over, he'd open up that book, and it'd help us find our way. Y'all got set up and didn't even see me do it. I set y'all right up. Whenever he got lost, he'd pull over, he'd open up the book, and it helped us find our way. That's what Thomas would do. But I know another Thomas, better than Thomas. Come on now. I know a Jesus that when you get lost, all you got to do is pull over, open up the book, flip through it, find out where you are, and it'll help you find your way. And that's what my dad did, and that's what I do. When I get lost, things get a little hectic, things get a little chaotic, I don't know what to do. I pull over, I open up the book. Now, let me tell you what happens, because I'm a man. Where are my men at? There you go, there you go. What don't we like to do, men? There you go, ask for directions. And why? Because I know where I am, woman. <laughs> and my wife just sit there, ride, look out the window. We've been by this gas station three times. Listen, I wanted to go by it three times in case I ran out. We do the same thing in our spiritual walk. We know we're lost but we don't want to pull over and open up the book. We know things aren't going our way, but we don't want to pull over and what? Open up the book. And sometimes in order to get yourself back on track, you got to stop, pull over, and open up. There are people watching at home. Your life is going through all kinds of craziness. You don't know which way is up. And here's what God is saying. He sent me by to say, stop, pull over, and open up that book. Let me give you what to open up to. Proverbs every morning, Psalms every night. It's 31 days in a, in a month, 31 days in Proverbs, 31 Proverbs in a book. Open up. Pastor, you want me to read all that? You scrolled all that. Come on, scrollers. Where are my scrollers at? You didn't watch the news? Come on now. You didn't watch the housewives? I'm going to hit yours in a minute. You didn't watch the CSIs? I'm going to hit yours in a minute. Come on. You didn't watch the Chicago PD, MD? I know I was going to catch y'all. I'm, I'm, I'm just like, I know y'all don't go to Omega. I, I set my church up all the time. I'm like, man, y'all don't play the lottery. What's it up to now? And if, as soon as somebody hollers out, I'm saying, yep, got you. <laughs> right? So we have our shows, and we'll spend an hour on our show, but not an hour with God. I, I, I know I'm convicted, because I love Chicago. I, I'm a Chicago Med Fire PD. I love Void. I wish we had Void as the, as the, as the uh, chief of police in my town, in Baltimore. We need like a Void in Baltimore, though. But, but I say this because we'll spend three hours watching shows and won't spend three minutes with God and his word. And we wonder why our life's not impactful or why we don't have the revelation. We're not spending that kind of time. Let me keep going. I don't want to keep you too long. My wife looks hungry. She hasn't eaten all day. <laughs> The word of God is source and strength. One more. The word of God is source and strength. God is the strength and source of your life. And the more words you put in, the stronger you're going to be. The word of God is source and strength of your life. My scripture is Psalm 119, verse 28. My soul is weary and with sorrow. Strengthen me according to your word. Even the youth shall faint and utterly fall. 
and young men shall faint and grow weary. But here it is. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles, run not, get weary, and walk and not faint. My brothers and sisters, having the word of God in your life, having access to all that power and refusing to, to use it is one of the mistakes that most of us as members and ministers do. We try everything and everyone else. And I, I, love, I love the fact, and I want to say this, I love the fact that we have places where we can come and come together. But you need to make a habit, and we said it in our class, of cultivating time and space to increase your faith. Can I say that one more time? You need to spend time and find a space to increase your faith. And that means that I need to cultivate that time. I need to say, you know what, Jason? Every morning before you do anything else, even when I'm running late for school and to get there and to teach class, even when I'm running late, I'll say this. You have to spend time with God. You have to share a revelation of what God is sharing with you. So when your soul gets weary and you feel like you don't have strength, God will strengthen you in his word. What does the word of God say in Proverbs? I think I read somewhere. He said, it's like apples of gold and pitchers of silver. That's what reading the word of God, that's what the wisdom of God is. It's the best display of anything and the best source of empowerment. Can somebody say amen? amen. Going a little further, just as physical exercise strengthens our bodies, studying the word of God strengthens our souls. It provides us with spiritual nourishment and encouragement we need to persevere through difficult times. I was, I was my goal uh, at 51 years old was to bench press 315. Now, I don't know why uh, I have that goal. And, and if you ask me next week, I won't have any better answer than I do today. I don't know why. I just for some reason thought, hey, lifting 315 pounds would be great. So one day, uh, a lady down said, I put 315 pounds on the, on the bar, just past her to see how it was gonna work. Now, now I, don't, I don't know about your wife, I love my wife, my wife loves me, but I do know something, that she will prove her point. She will, she will prove her point. Any, any husbands out there have a wife that'll prove their point? If you can't wave at me, just wink at me in case you get it. <laughs> Here's what I knew, here's what I knew. If I got it off the bar and got it on my chest, it was gonna be up to me to get it back off my chest onto the bar because she was not gonna come down there and help me off of the situation. So I, I looked at the 315, I, I put it up, I said, now put that back down, and I took one weight off and took it down to 225, and I said, this, this is probably where you need to start. And that 225 was so heavy. I mean, it was super heavy. And I found this device online, and this device would stretch across your chest, and it helped you get the weight up. So you could push it just enough. It, it, it helped to get the weight up. And I tried it over and over again. Then I added a five, then I added a 10. And I got up to about 275, and I was super excited. I was super excited. Until one day my wife came down, saw me lifting. She said, I don't weigh that much. What you lifting that for? <laughs> You'll get it when you get home. I say that because a lot of times, the weights that we're trying to get The weights that we're trying to lift are unnecessary, right? Every weight that you're trying to lift is not necessary. Physical exertion, and, and especially as, as we get older, I'm, I'm gonna share with you, it's more about flexibility and stability than it is about strength. I wanna say that again, I'm, this, this is important. It's more about flexibility and stability than it is just strength. You being flexible, you being stable in your walk with God is more important than how strong you are on Sunday in your worship. So you can praise God all great on Sunday, but if you're weak Monday through Saturday. So becoming stable, becoming a person who can adapt to change, that's what the word of God does. And the more words you have in you, the more you can say, you know, I can pull that word right out of Deuteronomy. I can pull that word right out of uh, 1 Samuel. I can pull that word right out of 2 Samuel. Let me tell you, Pastor, and, and I hope you don't mind me sharing this. I'm working on a sermon series now about chess. And I bought all these chess pieces that we have in our, our pulpit, from the kings to, to the queen to the knight. And I'm doing this whole series. When I get to Mother's Day, of course, I'll talk about All Hail the, all hail the Queen. You know, that'll be the sermon title. But uh, what's great about this, and I've learned this about just watching chess, is that everything has to be done intentionally with wisdom. Anybody play chess out there? 
It's, it's, it's a wisdom thing. It's, it's, it's a patient thing. You have to be intentional. And, and the word of God is intentional. It's not something that you should take lightly. It's something that you should put your very much, very much your all in. Let me keep going. The word of God is a source of transformation. So not only is it my guide and my source of strength, it's a place that transforms me. The more you're in the Bible, the more the Bible gets in you. Hmm. John 15 says, if, my, if you abide in me and my word abides in you, you're going to bring forth fruit. It's a source of transformation. It changes who you are and it changes how you are. Romans 12, 2 says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Your mind is being changed as the word of God is being. In. There, there's so much that we allow ourselves to say. Has anybody ever said, I, I have to love you, but I don't have to like you? Where is that in the Bible? That's, that's me, 316. Or my mama told me 11 and 12, right? right? It, it doesn't exist. So what we have oftentimes are we have the colloquialisms or the paraphrases of people in church, but not necessarily what the word of God says. My Bible says if your neighbor asks you to go to mile, go to. Or if he slaps you on one cheek, turn to him the other. If he takes your coat, give him your cloak also. See, the Bible tells us that we're supposed to suffer and sacrifice for the people we're serving. The Bible says the greatest of them, pastors, right, will not be the person that calls himself bishop or the person that has the nice regalia on, but the person that serves everybody else. He said, I've washed your feet. This is what you, so be not conformed to the patterns. And I think that's what's happening in so many, what, in the people and the preachers and our world is we're being conformed to patterns. They're doing something in Baltimore City. As an educator, it, it, it disturbs me. They're now changing the grade scale. I don't know if many of you have seen this. So the grade scale now in Baltimore City is going to be anything between 84 and 100 is an A. That's deep, right? Now, I mean, you think, so 16 points between uh, uh, the bottom of A and the top of the A. So then, then do it again. Take 16 off 84. And then pretty soon you realize that we're basically handing people grades. So that we're not in inspiring people to reach for higher heights or do more. And I believe we've lowered the bar even in our churches. What we call Christianity now isn't the old time Christianity that we grew up with. And I'm not even that old. Come on, say amen to that. Right? I, I mean, it's not Christianity I came into. I'm 51. I've been in Christ since I was 17. So in 34 years, it has changed drastically. If I come to church on Sunday, I'm Christian. I don't have to tithe. I don't have to love anybody. I don't have to forgive anybody. I don't have to care for my neighbor. I don't have to know anybody. I, I go to that church. Yeah, but are you in Christ? Many will come and say, we cast out demons in your name. Many will come and say, we sang in your name. But they'll say, depart from me because I've never met you. You were church, you weren't Christian. You, you, you were in the building, but you weren't a believer. The word of God gives us the delineation between the saints and the ain'ts and the sheep and the goats. I'm going to say, transform me, Lord. Can y'all just say, that? transform me, Lord. Renew my mind. I'm going to get you out of here. I know we got to go. Let, let, the word of God is like a mirror that reflects our true selves and transform us from the inside out. When you look in the mirror of the word of God, do you see the kind of Christian that Christ would be proud of? Not when the people see you, but when you look in the mirror of what it means to really be Christian, is Christ pleased with you? My God. It helps us align our thoughts, attitudes, and actions toward God's perfect will. So it's not just our actions, it's our attitude. It's not just our attitude, it's our thoughts. On, on Sunday, it's important for us not just to be Christians in pews, but Christians that can be used. Y'all can borrow that. Come on, say amen. It, it, it's more important for us not just to be Christians that in pews, but Christians that can be used, used by God so we can be his perfect will. Psalm 1 and 2 says, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night, which means in the morning you read a proverb. There's 31 of them, so you read 31, one every day for 31 days. When there's 30 days, read two at the end and start over again. Somebody say amen. And if you do it right, watch this, you'll read a psalm every night. Why do I read a, poem, a, psalm, a proverb in the morning? 
morning because the wisdom I need to walk through this day is found in the book of Proverbs. Well, why do I read a psalm every night? Because when I go to sleep at night, I go to bread with the praises of God on my lips and on my heart. And so I praise God in the, in the evening before I go and take my very last amen eye opening thing. I say, God, thank you for this day. Thank you for the way that you made in my life. Thank you for the wisdom to live it. I'm going to preach here in a second. Finding the light and discipline is hard. How many of you used to like to do something you don't like to do anymore? I'm coming to a close now. How many of you like to do something before but don't like to do it? I used to run. I ran a marathon. I ran a half marathon. I was crazy and went to Houston and tried to do an Ironman. I mean, that's how much I love running. I don't run so much anymore because the ankle is not happy, the hip is not happy, the old bones then got old. Somebody ought to say amen. I walk a little bit now, but ain't no running going on, Pastor. So working out used to be something I enjoyed. Now I don't like it so much. I actually have two gyms. I'm going to really tell the truth in here because I'm in church. I have three gyms. I have one in my house, one in my church, and one in my office. I have three gyms with all kinds of stuff. It looks like Planet Fitness had a sale, and I went in there and bought everything. I got treadmills. I got bikes. Uh, I got two rowing machines. I got hack squad. I got Smith machines. I got cages. I got dumbbells. I mean, you would think right now you were looking at Lou Ferrigno with all the stuff that I have, but guess what happens with all that stuff? I walk by just as proudly and entertainingly as the next person. Sometimes I hang my coat on it. Sometimes I hang my sock. Ain't no telling what I'm going to hang on. It's just everywhere. I have one here, have one there. Somebody said, I have one everywhere. But why don't you like doing it anymore? Because I can't run. The one thing I enjoyed most about, amen, working out was running. There's this thing called a runner's high. After about the first mile or second mile, the endorphins kick in, and you really feel like you're doing your thing. When I used to go run a revival for pastor down in South Carolina, I used to run. The, every morning I'd get up, I'd go for a run, two or three miles. I'd map it out on MapQuest, and I'd go for a run. Not being able to run has taken all the fun out of working out. I'm going somewhere. I didn't set y'all up one more time. Y'all don't see me doing it. Sometimes what you used to do, you can't do no more. So you have to find a new delight in something else. So I'm trying to find that new delight in my own life. I'm trying to find what can make me happy working out. Sometimes you need a workout partner, just like you need a prayer partner. Because when you don't want to do it, they can get you into it. Somebody say amen. Yours may not have been working out. Somebody would have been video games or playing tennis. I used to do a little bit of that. Reading books or playing a musical instrument. Where are my musical instrument people at? You used to play piano or clarinet or trumpet. You did something and it was fun for the time, but you couldn't even find your clarinet no more. If I gave you a million dollars, you don't know where that thing is. One day it was all you used to do. Now you don't do it so much anymore. Finding the light and discipline is hard. Studying the word of God is essential for spiritual growth, guidance, strength, and joy. It equips us with spiritual battles and transforms us into Christ's image. Somebody say amen. As I go to my seat on tonight, I'm reminded of John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Just as Jesus is the living word, studying the written word of God deepens our relationship with him. If you ever want to get close to Jesus, read your Bible. You ever want to spend time with Jesus? Read your Bible. You ever want to know what Jesus is thinking? Read your Bible. And the more words you get in you, my brothers and my sanctified sisters, watch the way that word begins to work for you and in you to transform everything in your life. Can we do that on tonight as I go to my seat? Can we commit ourselves to studying and meditating on the word of God on a daily basis? Can we be as devoted to the word of God as we are to Chicago Fire? Chicago Med and Chicago PD? Can we be just as happy when we're watching and hearing the word of God as we are when we're watching hip hop or housewives? Somebody ought to say amen. Can we give God the glory for his word because his word has been so wonderful in our lives? Can somebody shout with me that if I did everything right, I wouldn't need the word of God to show me a new light. But I thank God on tonight. Good night, y'all. I thank God on tonight that his word is ever fresh. It 
is sharper than any two-edged sword. Uh, it cuts in the going and in the coming. Uh, sometimes it's cutting who I'm talking to, uh, and sometimes it's cutting the person doing the talking. Uh, have you ever preached to yourself, pastors? This is just for y'all. Have you ever been ready to talk so well to the people, and you got up there and got happy all of a sudden, uh, just thinking about what God had done in your life? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and help you. I shared it with my class. Uh, when I think of the goodness of Jesus, y'all ain't going to say that, and all that he's done for me and mine, I can't help but to scream out hallelujah and give God all the glory. Good night, Mount Pleasant. Thank you for allowing me to be here. But just in case, amen, we don't make it back here on tomorrow. Let me say this to you. The word of God is real and there's nothing better than it. It's better than the best book. It's better than the best anything TV show. It's better than the best song. And when you put it all together, that word will speak to you in the midnight hour. Won't it do it? Won't God step in and share his word with you? Y'all that made me go ahead and feel like preaching. I believe there was a centurion soldier came to Jesus one day. And when he got there, he said, Jesus, I need some help. What do you need, young man? What I need is my servant back home to be healed. This is all in the word of God. And he says, well, show me where your servant is. I'm ready to go with you. I'll walk to you wherever you are. Why would he willing to do that? Well, because they had told Jesus that this centurion soldier had helped out the church. This centurion soldier was faithful in the faith even though he worked for Caesar. And so Jesus was ready to go with him to wherever he would take him. But the centurion soldier stopped Jesus and said these words, my love. He said this, I'm a man of authority just like you. When I tell people go, they go. When I tell people come, they come. And so you don't have to come with me, but I'm going to ask you to do me a favor. Just send the word. Y'all better talk to me here. Just send the word and my servant shall be healed because you have power that will follow amen your words command and isn't it good to know that if you know the word of God he'll do the exact same thing for you God bless you and good night amen amen uh, haven't we been blessed on this night we are grateful for Pastor Clark sharing us with us the importance of sharing uh, God's word. We're grateful for everyone online, uh, grateful for all of those who are here in person. Uh, remember, tomorrow night we'll start our classes right at 6.30. For those who are uh, going to be hybrid, uh, please make sure that you uh, check out The Realm and uh, Facebook and our church website for the new link uh, to the classes. There'll be new links that will be posted by in the morning, so please make sure you check those out uh, for the links for the classes. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Oh, gracious God, we thank you, Lord, for this night. We thank you for all of our teachers. We thank you for our lecturer. Oh, God, we thank you for all those who have participated. Lord, our goal this week is to continue to grow in you, oh God. We want to mature and be the men and women, oh God, that you are looking and calling for. We pray, oh God, now for safe traveling, grace and mercy. And if it be thy will, God, allow us to come back to this place on tomorrow. We thank you in advance for what we know you're going to do during this week. Have thine own way, O God, is our prayer. In Jesus Christ's name we do pray. And O God's people said, Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful night. Thank you so much for coming.